2003 Passat with a no start condition, cranks okay but doesn't start, uh, engine speed sensor fault code stored in memory, uh, 9 out of 10 times or 9.9% of the, 99% of the times it's a crankshaft position sensor, um, hasn't acted up at this point after the uh, towing company got it started, uh, we explained to the customer that we can spend time uh, trying to get it to act up. Um, if it's intermittent, it may not even act up during the day. Um, with, a, with it still being a stock crankshaft position sensor, uh, that's the first place to start with, uh, aside from wiring obviously, but like I said, 99% uh, of the time it's a sensor issue. So I'm just going to show you how to remove it. Installation will be in reverse removal. But first, this video is not sponsored by Western Family Rich Chocolate. Hot chocolate mix. But it's delicious on a cold day. A 2003 Passat with a no start, cranks okay, but does not start or didn't start until cranking quite a bit. Uh, supposedly tow truck driver came, uh, helped jump start the, the vehicle with the booster because by that time the battery was weak. Extended cranking and then all of a sudden it started. Uh, it hasn't acted up in shop yet, most likely a crankshaft position sensor issue. Uh, we scanned it, or at least I scanned it, crankshaft position sensor fault code as well as uh, EVAP small leak. Uh, in a case when you get a crank sensor code set, you want to make sure that the fuel pump is okay because a bad fuel pump can cause a crank position sensor fault code. So I'm just going to screen capture this for you guys. or. I'll get a uh, waveform here so you guys can see. I'm just going to crank it. And key on. You can see there's the initial prime. And pattern looks okay. No dropouts. It's showing around 5 amps. Usually they are around 7. But nice even pattern, no dropouts. Fuel pump is okay. It's going to save this so you guys can have it. Is that 90? 2003. Uh, fuel pump. Save. Link to the file is in the description so you guys can uh, view it on your own computer. So I'm going to put a crank sensor in this one. Yes, I know I'm not going to do any testing of this crank sensor because again it's working fine. 99% um, of the time it's a crank sensor fault. I have yet to see wiring issues uh, or anything like that. Intermittent hard starting, especially or stalling when the vehicle warms up. As the vehicle gets hot or the engine gets hot, the engine stalls out. That's a usual sign or symptom of a bad crank sensor. Uh, or driving to it, the shopping mall, the engine is warm, you shut it off, come back a half an hour later and it cranks and cranks and cranks. Another similar symptom or sign, telltale, telltale sign that the uh, crank sensor is no good. Um, there are resistance values, I'll put those in the uh, description as well, or sorry, in the video, uh, that you can check the resistance of the crank sensor. Uh, yes, they can be of help, um, mainly so on a vehicle that doesn't start. Once it doesn't start, then you can check the resistance value, most likely it's going to be open circuit. Uh, but anyways, that's it. Um, it's gonna, you're going to watch me put a crank sensor in this one. So the crankshaft position sensor uh, harness plug is right here, it's the grey one. Uh, you can disconnect it and you can do your resistance resistance checks according to the service manual. Uh, resistance checks are fine and dandy, but a lot of times they're really of no use. Uh, this is the harness side, ECU side, so you can obviously do your 
pin, pin out checks from here. It's a three wire sensor, two, a three wire connector. Two wires are the signal wires, positive and negative. It's an AC signal. The third one is a shunt or a ground. Uh, it reduces interference to the uh, signal wires. Uh, so in order to check these guys for short to ground or anything like that, uh, what you would have to do is disconnect the uh, engine computer uh, and then connect the multimeter here and then at the computer side of the harness and then check for short check for shorts to ground or to sh shorts to each other again this is most likely not the case um, it's just an old sensor you can see this is the original plug still uh, and the original um, routing of the sensor so uh, we're just going to go with the sensor the sensor is located to the right of the uh, oil filter uh, slash heat exchanger oil cooler mounted to the block get to it from the top from the bottom or from the top like I'm doing uh, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that secures it into place I think I've shown this on a uh, b5 Audi a4 uh, so it's just a matter of finding the bolt here with your socket and then you can undo the bolt use one hand to find the bolt and then you can slide the uh, socket over the bolt. God that guy talks noisily. He's a close talker too. Likes to be heard. Okay once the bolt feels like it's loose don't drop it. You can use your fingertips grab the bolt okay this is the uh, fun part you got a 50 50 chance that the uh, sensor is going to come out right away or it's going to be stuck like crazy so you want to just grab it and wiggle it It'll be easier on a colder engine in terms of less heat on your hands so this sensor is turning, but it's not really coming out. And you can grab yourself a hook and uh, just try to loop it into, get a hold of the sensor and pull on it. In the past, I've been, I've been known to use a pry bar. whatever it takes to get it out. I'm gonna lift it up and uh, pry on it from underneath. Good thing I lifted it. CV boot's broken. This side's okay. Inner boots are okay. So you can see the sensor right there. You just try to hook underneath it and pull it out. That moved. And there you can see the opening or the, the hole 
with the tone wheel in behind. I'm gonna stick a rag in the hole and clean out the bore or clean out the hole so that the new sensor can slide in better. Also wipe the surface of the block so that the sensor can sit flush. And what I do is I just pull the sensor out, uh, but what I do is I leave the original um, mounting clamps in place. So what I do is I just cut the sensor. Pull the old one out, and then um, fish the new one in and secure it. Put some oil on a new o-ring or on a new sensor. And you just uh, find the hole and stick it in. Somewhere around here. Okay, once it's in, all you got to do is align the uh, mounting holes. That's almost perfect. Just use a piece of plastic bag or glove to hold the bolt on the socket and then you just got to find the hole again using a mirror can help find the hole I think it's about 10 or 15 newton meter. Move the rubber glove. Okay, and then you reroute the wire so that it doesn't get caught on anything. And obviously plug it in to the harness plug.
so I'll reroute it like I said and uh, secure it with with new cable ties. That's it. Put the coolant bottle back and you're done.